You know, I think if we look at our the, the legacy, I mean, this field comes out of feminism, whether feminist research as well as feminist activism, who made gender visible in the lives of women and girls. And it took us a long time to understand the complexity of gender in the lives of men and boys or kind of the masculinities in men as not this one monolithic block, but as a you know, complex set of ideas and norms and power structures that are felt in women's lives, but also felt and reinforced and reconstructed in men's lives. Um, and I think, you know, we've spent a huge amount of time in trying to achieve gender equality. We've not done it. We now have a new UN agency that is devoted solely to that, that has a more visible status within the UN trying to say we need to do more about it, but we've got this tremendous attention to gender equality. And it took us a long time to figure out that whatever revolution we've had that has changed women's lives and women's roles, we need some kind of a parallel revolution in men's lives um, that either men have to be forced into dr kicking and screaming, or that some men are figuring out that there's actually benefits to gender equality, and lots of men are already figuring out, even if they couldn't say it, that there's something that wasn't working in their life in their lives, in their relationships with others, in this construction of these very rigid notions of manhood and the power inequalities that some men also experience in their own lives. You know, I think a lot of our research on men has been about sort of counting mapping, measuring, men behaving badly. And there's no shortage of examples of that. And we've got huge, a huge number of questions in the images survey about men's use of violence. But I think one of the things that's coming out and that needs to be understood is that the violence that men carry out is a product of the violence that men have um, experienced growing up huge and clear associations between violence that men witness when they were young, in the home, outside the home, um, and the violence they later use against themselves, against other men, against women and other partners. Um, and I think understanding that, just how much the daily experiences of men, particularly low-income men in parts of the world, have violence in them, witnessing it, suffering it, experience trauma as a result of it, how that feeds into men's use of violence, and also how men experience um, economic stress. Those issues to me are just such the, the volatile formula that's producing so much of men behaving badly. And which we also see data showing how men want to do right by their families, by their children, by the people around them. Huge support from men across the board for paternity leave policies, for example. And even if men are reporting, and lots of men reporting that they're participating in close to equal ways in the care of children. Now women aren't necessarily saying the same thing. So we know we seem to believe that men's reports of what they provide in terms of care for children may be more than what they're actually doing. But I think it is interesting to point out that lots of men see benefits for being to themselves, they see benefits to their children and to their partners when they participate in more equal ways. And that's a slow revolution that I think we need to, to try to figure out ways that we support and, and amplify. That we don't just associate the prevention of violence and the absence of violence as being gender equality. How do we engage men and understand men in their caring relationships with others? Um, and so that we promote empathy with men, we promote solidarity, we promote their connection with others so that their lives are not always about competition and violence.